ES Audio. What's up? I'm John Weeks. This is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. And coming up, could seaweed packaging replace plastic? But first, Elon Musk has reportedly asked the US government to start covering the costs of his Starlink satellite service in Ukraine. Since spring this year, the high-speed internet terminals have been used as a key source of communication for Ukraine's military, allowing it to stay connected when cellular phone and other internet networks have been destroyed. But it's reported the SpaceX boss said the company is not in a position to donate more terminals to Ukraine or fund the current ones in use indefinitely. It follows an earlier dispute over his public comments suggesting Ukraine's government should cede territory in exchange for peace with Russia. On Friday, Elon tweeted that the operation has cost SpaceX $80 million and will exceed $100 million by the end of the year. A 72-foot replica of the 8,000-mile-per-hour space rocket due to blast off for the UK's first ever orbital satellite launch mission is going on public show. The replica of Launcher 1 is coming to the Science Museum this weekend. It's 72 feet long, so it matches the original size of uh, the Launcher 1 rockets that have been launched in the US. That's Matt Archer, the UK Space Agency Launch Programme Director. He told us it's going on show for this weekend only. But what about the real rocket, which is set to launch from Cornwall next month? The Launcher 1 rocket is landing in the UK today. It's fully constructed and being shipped on a C-17 aircraft, and it will arrive alongside a separate 747 cargo flight that's bringing the ground support equipment. As we mentioned this week, Launcher 1 will be strapped to a Virgin Orbit Boeing 747 with a cargo of small orbital satellites next month. Having completed a wet dress rehearsal in the United States, so we know the rocket is well tested. They will then kind of do preparations for launch here, including a second wet dress rehearsal, which happens around kind of two weeks before launch. The CEO of a company making plastic alternative packaging using seaweed says it's one of the most sustainable materials we can use. Seaweed grows extremely fast, and the seaweed that we've tried in the lab grows up to one meter per day compared to kind of like millions of years that it takes to make petroleum. So there really is no kind of like reason that we should continue to use plastic and pretend that it's cheap. Pierre Pallier runs Not Plat, a firm which has been using seaweed to create edible bubbles which can hold small amounts of water for things like marathons, as well as seaweed sachets for sauces like ketchup and mayonnaise. Pierre told us seaweed is completely biodegradable and has proven to be really versatile. In the pipeline, we have a flexible film that we are looking at for replacing all sorts of different sachets, for cosmetics, for fashion, for lots of different use cases. And we even started to make our own paper from one of the byproducts of our extraction of uh, seaweed. But Pierre said the thing holding it back from being used more widely is the fact that plastic is so cheap to buy. He told us it's the true cost of plastic on society that people and businesses should consider. It's about 10 times the price of the market. So it means that whenever we use plastic in our daily life, when we pay for products that are made of plastic, we're paying a 10% deposit on something that costs 90% more, but that cost will be paid by future generations. You can now learn how to do the basic steps of CPR using an augmented reality lens on Snapchat. The lens created by the tech firm and the British Red Cross guides users through the steps of the CPR process, including clearing the airway, chest compressions, and looking for a nearby defibrillator. The lens creates a life-sized digital image of an injured or ill person, placing them in the same room as the user before showing the CPR procedure. It's as research shows seven out of 10 cardiac arrests happen in front of bystanders, but fewer than 20% of people end up providing first aid. Snapchat and the Red Cross say it is for educational purposes only and doesn't replace proper in-person training. A tech firm in Canada has produced a secure and easy to use app to connect Ukrainians who fled the war in their country with people across the world willing to help them. Yes Help, designed by One IQ Corp, uses on-device ID validation, so users seeking or offering help can verify their identity by scanning their passport or driver's license. 
It's also got a messaging feature which uses an AI-powered smart translation tool to translate messages between different languages. The app is designed to help Ukrainians with everything from securing shelter and transportation to childcare, pet care and donations. Coming up, how researchers have unlocked a new benefit of Minecraft, plus ads are finally coming to Netflix. During the break, why not hit follow and give us a rating? Welcome back. There's big pressure on the Prime Minister Liz Truss to ensure the upcoming online safety bill includes rules for fraudulent paid-for advertising. A coalition of consumer groups, charities and industry bodies want the new legislation to include measures so the top tech firms take responsibility for scam adverts on their sites, which are paid for by fraudsters. Analysis of figures from Action Fraud shows victims reported losses of £1.7 billion over 12 months, which works out at almost £5 million lost to scams every day. The group argues that further delays to the bill will mean online fraud continues, costing people dearly and devastating their lives and finances beyond repair. And finally, it's not ghosts, mummies and werewolves we should be scared of this Halloween. The real horror sneaking into homes across the world is adverts on Netflix. From November, a Netflix basic subscription will roll out to 12 countries, including the US, Germany, Japan and Mexico, costing $6.99 a month. It's thought it will limit the breaks to four to five minutes of ads per hour. Each ad will run for between 15 and 30 seconds, and they'll appear before and during programs. But the basic tier is not set to come to the UK just yet. You are up to date. Come back at four o'clock for the Leader Podcast, where we bring you the latest news from the Evening Standard. We will be back on Monday afternoon at one o'clock. Catch you then.